All right, everyone, welcome to the first day of class. Uh, you mind if I get a roll call? Let's start with you. Psychogenesis? Here. Um, how about the SNES? Do we have the SNES here? SNES. Okay, and the Sony PlayStation? Hello! Okay, and lastly, uh, the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, I'm here. What was that? What's up? Yeah, I... I can't really see your face very well. What's... Are you good? No, yeah, uh, yeah, this is just kind of how I'm built. The Game Boy Advance was the first handheld video game system for a lot of kids. It had a cool, slick look, these nice little cartridges, and you could take it anywhere. But along with the insanely compact nature of the system, it came with a lot of sacrifices. Now obviously games couldn't be as visually impressive as they were on home systems, but it also only had two buttons rather than the four that most controllers were starting to have at the time, so the controls of the games had to be simplified. Now of course it isn't Nintendo to blame for the limitations of the system, I mean they already proved that they could make a home console with the SNES. The screen was tiny and to pack in that much information on such a small system was already really impressive. Matter of fact, there were a lot of beloved games that came out on the Game Boy Advance that took advantage of the system's capabilities perfectly. But today I still want to poke fun at three different types of games that came out on the Game Boy Advance that may have hurt the name of portable gaming. The port of a video game is when a game is designed to run on one platform, whether that be in an arcade or on a home console like the Sega Genesis, and it's converted to run on a different system. When the Game Boy Advance came out, a lot of people were looking forward to playing their favorite games on the go, but once they got the game, they realized it just wasn't the same. Now there's a few reasons for this. The first one, as I said before, is that a lot of video games, especially fighting ones, use the full capability of a controller to pull off advanced moves and complicated combos. When you have a really popular arcade fighting game like Mortal Kombat, you have a joystick and five buttons to play with. This made dozens of different moves possible and there was a lot of potential for interesting and complex gameplay. Once you port it over to the Game Boy Advance, now you have a directional pad instead of a joystick and you have two buttons instead of five. The game also had a lot of missing characters from the original, the movement was clunky and inaccurate, and the colors didn't look anywhere near as good as you could get them in the arcade or even on any other system they came out on. And even if the game looks halfway decent for a portable game on your fancy monitor right now, it didn't look the same on that tiny screen. Up until 2005, the Game Boy Advance wasn't backlit, so even if you did have a light source, the games were hard to see and could be really dull. Because of that, a lot of ports decided to oversaturate the colors in the games and sometimes completely change the background of the game so people could see what they were playing. The original Mortal Kombat was praised highly on every home system it was on, consistently getting around a 9 out of 10 from every publication. The port on the Game Boy Advance has a 33 on Metacritic. Another big issue with the system was the sound. The Sega Genesis and other home consoles around the time had a better sound system that could produce softer sounds and a wider range of notes for music. The Game Boy's 8-bit sound system couldn't produce the same notes for music, but it could produce higher quality sound effects. So a lot of the time music quality decreased a lot, while sound effects from different characters would be blasted through those tiny speakers. One example of this is the port of Earthworm Jim 2. A lot of the backgrounds looked great and the game got decent reviews from publications at the time of its release, but everything about the port was wrong. The controls felt felt slippery, the gameplay was slow, and more than anything the soundtrack was butchered and a lot of the sound effects were missing from the game. Because of the limitations of the console, it didn't seem like the game developer put the same time into porting the music. But people who loved the original game didn't oversee this at all, and the game flopped on Metacritic with a score of 45. Sonic Genesis, a beloved game that got a score of 86% from game rankings, got a score of 33 on Metacritic. The game had horrible physics, the camera was too close to the characters, the frames per second was extremely slow, and the soundtrack was given very little rework. Medal of Honor Underground made a big mistake by trying to port a shooting game to the Game Boy Advance. And so many other games were given the finger by hardcore gamers all around the world because of their clunky ports. Star Wars Jedi Power Battles, The Legend of Spyro A New Beginning, and Comic Zone just being a few of them. But what's better than a ported game sucking because the original game was so much better? Nothing is better than a good old licensed game. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, Batman Arkham City, GoldenEye were all licensed games that are known and loved by gamers all around the world. 
But when it comes to the Game Boy Advance, I don't know if their heart was in the same place. We've got Zoe 101, a minigame collection based off the Nickelodeon show with very little praise from publications. That's So Raven, another Nickelodeon classic bringing the psychic teen to a side-scrolling adventure game that lasts a whole 90 minutes. I mean, for a $30 game, that's a killer 33 cents a minute to play this epic adventure. And what would a video game console be without the smash hit puzzle game March of the Penguins based on the 2005 nature documentary narrated by Morgan Freeman receiving an excellent Metacritic score of 44. Everyone's favorite Star Wars movie, Attack of the Clones, was given the honor of a Game Boy Advance game which Game Informer gave a 1 out of 10, calling it the dark side of gaming. We've got E.T. Extraterrestrial with a 46 on Metacritic which features a lot of running in the forest. On the bright side, you do get to play as E.T. and Human Boy. And the cops are the bad guys, so it really is ahead of its time. Spider-Man Battle for New York is a classic on the Game Boy Advance, with minimal web swinging, like there really isn't any web swinging, and maximum climbing in vents as Spider-Man. You know, that thing Spider-Man does where he's always climbing in vents. And finally, the fan favorite of licensed games, a racing game. For a licensed racing game, you need a great cast of characters with a wide variety of courses and an interesting twist on the gameplay. For Shrek Swamp Kart, for Shrek, for, <laughs> for Shrek Swamp Kart Speedway, that's really hard to say. I'm not sure which of those boxes they ticked. In terms of characters, we've got the classic gang back together, you know, Shrek, Fiona, a dwarf? And who can pass up this amazing sprite of Donkey in his cart? And for tracks, we've got a lot of dirt and a lot of trees. But come on, it's Shrek. There's got to be some great spin on it that makes it special. Well, there's not. I didn't know a company could be such a big fan of a video game console. Disney released 30 different games for the Game Boy Advance with Disney as a part of its title. 24 of those games were titled Disney's with the rest of the title coming after them. And 17 of those games were the same side-scrolling platformer with a different Disney character printed on them. Disney's The Lion King 1 and a half, Disney's Aladdin, Disney's Magical Quest, Disney's Lilo and Stitch, Disney's Kim Possible Revenge of the Monkey Fist, and many, many more were just the same exact game. And Disney wasn't the only company to do this. The classic look of a side-scroller platform game was the trademark look of so many Game Boy Advance games. My cup of juice when I was four years old had to be SpongeBob The Battle for Bikini Bottom, a game that looked nothing like the actual game that I had on the Xbox. Anyways. Anyways. What? what? No, why do you keep doing that? Stop. Come on, man. I just want to be like one of the boys. I feel like I'm always kind of an outcast. Come on. Can you just give me something to live for? Anything? Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe if you want to see more because I make a new video every single Monday. Oh, yeah. And now for this week's Gamer of the Week.